Hello, today I'm going to show you how to use uh, some uh, phylogenetic tree manipulation or dendrogram manipulation uh, functions uh, in order to collapse clades uh, and to label those clades in uh, various dendrograms and uh, phylogenetic trees. So uh, there, there's several different programs that you can use to manipulate your phylogenetic trees or just dendrograms in general. Uh, two of the more popular ones are tree graph uh, and tree view. Uh, these are two good good programs if uh, you're working on a budget uh, because they're both free. Uh, but uh, what I've found through the years is that uh, neither one of them is really an all-inclusive uh, package. So there's things that sometimes you need to do that you're not able to do in one, so you got to go to the other one. Um, on the other hand, uh, there's an online uh, application called Iterative Tree of Light, Life, or Interactive Tree of Life, um, ITOL for short, uh, that's very, very all-inclusive. Uh, this is my go-to program for manipulating uh, dendrograms. And it, it costs a little bit. It's a, there's a small fee associated with it, but in my opinion, uh, you're far better off paying the fee and having the full functionality, being able to produce publication quality uh, dendrograms. So uh, let's start off. We're gonna we're gonna look at how to collapse clades, and also uh, how to label clades that you have collapsed or otherwise. So uh, you're going to want to go to itol.embl.de and you can see this uh, website right up here at the top of the page. itol.embl.de Go to that website and once you've registered and you have uh, your username and password you can log in. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. And once you're in, you're going to want to go to My Trees and import a tree into ITOL. In this case, I have an example tree that I brought in that has uh, 85 leaves on it. So I'm going to go to that tree. And in trees, you generally have uh, different taxa that you know something about. So they may have something in common. They may be from the same species or they may be from the same gene uh, or whatever the, that they have in common about them. And so sometimes you have such big trees that you need to collapse some of the clades and just call them by their, their common feature. Uh, if it was species, maybe you say, okay, this is must musculus, this, this clade here. And then we have another uh, clade that is uh, Rattus norvegicus. Or whatever the, the, the case may be, however you're wanting to uh, classify them. Okay, so there's a couple of things that you can do uh, to, to display those a little more informatively. One of them is collapsing the clades. So let's say that I want to collapse this clade here that has four different taxa in it. So what I would do to collapse that is first I want to give it a label. I want to, want to say what it's going to be. So in this case, you click back here at this node, and you go to Labels, this node, Edit Label. And these are coronaviruses, so I'm going to say uh, these are beta coronaviruses, uh, and there's four of them here. So we'll just say beta coronavirus 4 as the label for that uh, particular claim. And you're going to click Check, and then you're going to click on that node right there again and you're going to go to collapse clade. And when you do, that label that you added to it, beta coronavirus, BT, COV, and the number of attacks in there, four, will appear here. Okay. Now, I don't really like how this program puts these big, long triangles to represent that collapsed clade. So now what you're going to want to do is go over here on the control panel, go to advanced, and go down here to collapsed clades, and change that to ISO triangle. Okay, and now we have a nice little triangle here, and we have the label here. So that's one way that you can handle labeling clades. 
Now another way, so we have this clade here that also has many coronaviruses in it. So in this case, let's say that I just want to uh, set them apart, okay? So again, I'm going to click back here at this node, and there's 16 leaves. And I'm going to click there, and now I'm going to go to Colored Ranges and Create New Range. And we're going to call this range, let's call it... Uh, I don't know, let's call it beta coronavirus, BTCOV, uh, put the number in there, 16, and then we're going to set a color for it. So we can click here, set the color, let's pick kind of a, a light blue, I guess, let's go light blue, um, and then we're going to click choose, and we're going to click create range, and when we do, you see that that entire clade gets highlighted. So now you would provide a key in whatever publica publication that uh, you put this in and, and that key would indicate that uh, the the blue box represents uh, some beta coronaviruses, whatever, uh, however you want to classify them. Okay. Now then, we can do a few things with this box here. I like to put a border on it. So we'll come down here to the colored ranges below the control panel and we just got to increase the number of pixels for the border. I like to do five. Now then the really cool thing is is once you have this colored range now if you want to add something else to that in other words have it be blue just scroll down pick your another clade let's see here uh, let's go right here Okay, let's pick this node here, and now we can go to colored ranges, and we can add it to an existing range, and then all we got to do is choose that range. It'll automatically highlight all of the leaves in that particular uh, clade. So, that's how you can uh, add some clarity, collapse your tree, uh, make it a little, little bit more intuitive, if you will. Uh, even after you've you've added these colored ranges, you can also collapse the clade. So let's go back. Uh, let's go back to this node here, and let's add a add a label for it. This node, edit label, and let's say uh, beta coronaviruses two, and I think there was 28 in there. 28, and we're gonna check. Okay, and now then we can collapse that. And you can you can double check if you got the right number of, of leaves just by hovering over the the node there. And uh, so now we're going to double click it. And we're going to click collapse clade. And now we have the beta coronavirus two with 28 leaves in it, 28 taxa. Now then, one tip I want to give you uh, before I let you go on this is. Set, not only save your changes, so this little pop-up will come up anytime that you change something in this tree. Make sure you click save all. Okay, and that saves the changes. But, if I was to close this program out, log out, and log back in, uh, even though the labels and stuff would still be stored, uh, they wouldn't be collapsed anymore. Okay, so in my opinion, this is one of the flaws of uh, this program. But what you got to do is you got to go here to tree views at the bottom of the uh, control panel and click save as the default view for this tree. Make sure you do that a whole bunch because if you don't, the way that you have set it up and how you want to view it is just going to go away when you log out. And it does automatically log you out after a while. So that's one of the things that you can do to make your tree a little more, a little easier to view. Now then, another thing you can do is you can change the tree uh, to a circular tree. So right now it's rectangular. You can change it to circular, and you also have the option of doing an unrooted tree. But let's do the circular right quick. So uh, in order to make this a little easier to view, let's hit circular, and now we see that we have a circular tree. Now then, you can change the size of the labels, the, the, the font. That's one thing that you can do, and you also can change the weight 
of the lines. And so all of this makes this more visually ap appealing, uh, a little easier to, to view. So that's how you can use uh, interactive tree of life in order to manipulate your dendrograms and make them uh, easier to view. So I hope this helps you out. I uh, hope it gets you a little further down the line. Thanks for watching.